so in here we want to deal with uh, pagination so I want this to be able to go between pages to see uh, in case we have too many items in one page right so pagination is actually simple in itself because we just have to know two things we just have to know a limit and an offset that's it okay so the way things work is like this let me go to users there's actually a problem with our system here and hopefully I'll remember to correct it because if we go to lecturers we have multiple tables multiple uh, values of the same information here just that on these other ones it's disabled on this one it's enabled we shouldn't have this we should just have one record with a disabled and enabled like this so hopefully I remember to fix this but let's go back to pagination now if we go to users here if I say select all from users as a query it's going to return all of these results but if I tell it to limit two results it's going to get two of these results now depending on the order if I tell it to order by the ascending it will get the first two if I tell it order by descending it will get the last two so let's see this in action for a second let's go to the SQL tab and here it says uh, select all from users let's remove all the where clauses and just press OK now you see it retrieves all records if I go back and say order by ID descending like this it will reverse the order so you see it starts with number nine number eight and then I can use this to tell it to limit to two then it will just bring two results so let me just say edit inline and right at the end here I'll just say limit two and say go so now you see it gets the last and second last here okay well and good but now what if I want to get the next two items not this number nine and number eight I want number seven and six so this is where the offset comes in so edit here I'll just tell it to offset the results by two items like this and just say go and as you can see now I have seven and six this is equal to saying we are on page two and then if I continue I say offset four so you see that the offset here is not going one two three no I'm telling it how many to skip so if per page the limit is two it means for me to go to page three the first page is offset zero like this okay so there we go offset zero no offset and then here I'll tell it to jump two items that becomes page one if I go back here I'll tell it to jump four items because it shows two per page so it only makes sense to skip four and that goes to page three so this is the secret here pretty straightforward so let's see something like this in action so what I will do is let me close these all files close all files and I'm going to go to um, students where we're showing students and let's add an offset and a limit at the top here so just say limit is equal to two so this is how many items per page now I want to create an offset but for me to create an offset I have a formula that requires me to know what page number I am on otherwise we won't know what offset to give so we'll say page underscore number is equal to let's say we are on page one okay cool so so far we know the limit we know the number or the page number what we need now is an offset so simple formula to create an offset offset is equal to page number minus one what have I done with my life okay so page wow why do I keep making so many mistakes 
page number minus one and then the result of this we will multiply by the limit okay cool this gives us a good offset value so here we have two things we have the limit we have the offset which are the two things required in order to create a query like this so let's see this in action so what will happen is on page one we should have an offset of zero so let's see if the formula works so page one will have one minus one which is zero any number you multiply by zero is still zero so let's say we're on page two right so on page two we'll have two minus one which will be one and one by limit which is two then we'll have an offset of two which matches exactly what we were doing here and let's see if we on page three we'll get an offset of four as it is here so if let's say we're on page three it's going to be three minus one which is what two and then two times the limit which is two gives us four so it should work let's put this on page one and let's add these to our query so to add uh, pagination to our query all we need to do is add an offset and a limit so i'll do so on both of these guys so i'll just say limit and then use the variable limit whatever that will be and then i'll just say offset and then i'll use the variable offset so all i've done is say limit limit offset offset that's it so now things are working so we're on page one let's see how many will return here we need only two results yes mm -hmm. look at that so we got two results guy and jane now let's see if on page two if we change this to page two we will get uh the other two so if i now refresh we got the other two so it's working the only thing is that we need to be able to click here to change these values and not to alter them from here right so the first step we need to do is look for the word page in our get variable so page number is equal to let's add an if if very uh, an if statement here uh, for is set Ugh, my typing is getting worse so say if is set get like this uh, we're looking for page that's what we're going to call it so page if this is set question mark then let's set it to page but i want to make sure it's an integer so i'll cast it as such and then i'll put a full colon and if this isn't set let's set it to one because page is equal to page one now also we must make sure that page number does not go beyond below one so right here we'll say page number is equal to uh if page number well, that's the question is less than or less than one then what do we set it to question mark we set it to one otherwise we set it to whatever the page number was originally okay so here we assign the page number but then here we make sure that it's not below one right okay cool any other number is fine and then we can use it in our equation good so what this means is that now if i refresh i get the first page already in fact let's change the limit um, anyway let me leave it for now so all i need to do now is put a question mark and say page is equal to two in the url and you see we are on page two now if i change that to one then look at that we are on one so now at least whatever changes are made in the url they reflect down here very nice so all we have to do now is put links here that correspond to the page numbers that we want to change and then we'll be home and dry right you see uh, we'll be able to move between pages 
Let me change this to limit to one so that we only see one item per page. Page one, let's go to page two, let's go to page three, let's go to page four. Okay, what about page five? Okay, no students on page five, right? Good. So it's working fine. So now we need to create a class so that we can simply echo out the uh, the pagination down here and click from there. But before we do that, let's just go to Bootstrap uh, documentation and then click on components and go to pagination. And then here you can look for the pagination you like. I kind of like this one, but I want the one that has an active thingy here. So I'm just going to copy this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Actually, let me just copy this right here. Copy. And then I will go to students uh, view. So students dot view. And right at the end here, I will paste my pagination. Like, like so. So back here, refresh. And there we go. We have that pagination. Uh, is this correct? I wonder. What about this one? Let me replace with this one, just so I can see the difference, if any at all. No, no difference, only just that in the middle. So let me just undo. I like that was better and uh, cleaner. But why is it so wide? Why? Let me move it outside here because it seems uh, there's some flexing going on there. Apparently not. I needed that. So back here. There we go. Hmm. Very interesting. Indeed. Okay. What I would do is instead, let me put this inside a div so it doesn't have to participate in this stretching. So put that in a div. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it forgets about this stretch. Apparently not. Okay, so let's try. Uh, let's see here. Let's add a class and let's put column. Column large. Or let's just say column six. Let's see here on all views, maybe too large, column four, how's that, nothing seems to move this guy, okay, so let's try content justify center, just to center this thing, and it doesn't even respond at all, let me try and justify from here, Refresh. Nothing. Hmm. What is going on with Bootstrap here? Okay, maybe this list right here is the key. So I'll just keep moving it. Let me move this one to here. Justify center. Hmm. It's centering on the other side. So which means this needs to be in the center. Now, if sometimes you have these issues, just uh, put some background color on one of these so you can see what's what. So I just want to put some black background color so I see how far it extends. So it's not anywhere at all. Let me move this to here. And let me see where that is. So even that isn't showing up anywhere let's see background color let me remove this style okay there we go finally okay so we have that and we have the pagination so if you want you can limit the width of these things here um i don't know uh, what we can do about that, but I think uh, putting it inside a div was a good idea. It worked after all. 
Okay, so this is fine. And then if you want this particular page to be active, let's say it's page one, we'll just put active class right here, like so. And boom, okay, there we go. So page one, yeah. Oh, so I know why this is all weirded up. I have zoomed in like that. Okay, anyway, so we have the buttons here, right? Which is all good. All I need now is to be able to echo this whenever I need for multiple pages. So which means I'll need it to be in a separate file. Let's see what we can do in the next video.